Thanks for taking some time, Nate. Uh, how would you describe the integration process uh, during week one on the job here? It's been great. I mean, it's been a pretty, uh, pretty easy transition for me. You know, it's been some good hard practices. Uh, it's a really good group of guys. And, you know, I think it helps too. Uh, you know, playing with Lewis, you know, and Forbert before. So I think um, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I've, I've enjoyed it. And we'll go next to Ted Wyman from the Winnipeg Sun. Go ahead, Ted. Hi, Nate. Uh, you're playing on a line here with Trevor Lewis and with uh, Matthew Perot, a couple of guys over 30 like yourself, uh, a real veteran line of guys who've done this role for a long time. What are your thoughts on that line and what you can contribute? Well, I think, you know, both those guys, um, you know, Matthew and Trevor, you know, they both uh, play well both sides of the puck, but they both can make plays, both skate well. Um, good defensively and uh, it's you know when you have guys like that that uh, you know they know their role they know what to expect but at the same time they're making plays it's 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 a lot of fun to play with and for me it's you know nothing really changes I mean um, you know for me and my contributions it has to be uh, same thing you know winning face-offs being physical and then at the same time making plays with them and um, you know I think uh, hopefully you know the over 30 line uh, you know can produce some you know do some damage hopefully. We'll go next to Mike McIntyre from the Winnipeg Free Press. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, hi, Nate. Uh, just like to get your scouting report on a couple other wingers you had right at the very start of camp last week. They, they stuck you with, I guess, a couple of the kids, uh, Jansen Harkins, Mason Appleton. Um, just how do you view, I guess, the bottom six of this team? There's a lot of talk, of course, about the forward group, the top six. But what's your take on just the bottom six here and what you guys can do as a group? Well, first off, those two, I, I mean, I was uh, really impressed with uh, the way they skate, both of them. Um, I, I really didn't know how fast uh, apps or harks were. They both can really move. Um, and uh, I, I think you look at uh, our bottom six per se, and you look at, uh, you know, the veterans bottom six and the, with the mixture of some younger guys. And um, I, I really like our group. I mean, I, I think top to bottom, I think you have a lot of guys that are versatile that can play different roles that can, um, you know, play wing, play center. And um, I, I think it's, it could be a really, uh, you know, a really formidable uh, bottom six that can, uh, you know, that can really contribute. We'll go next to Kelly Moore from CJOB. Go ahead, Kelly. Thanks, Gregor. Yeah, maybe you, you could call that line, Nate, the dirty thirties. It's just a suggestion anyway. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Earlier this week, uh, Paul Maurice talked about it. Teddy alluded it to it just a little bit in the question with you before. But one of the things Paul said that uh, I think really seemed to stick was, you know, these guys have been around a long time. They know the role. They know almost how to get out of every shift they're going to take on the ice. Uh, can you describe the difference between, you know, handling a fourth line role at this stage of your career to when you were either in the middle or at the start of it? Yeah, I mean, that goes back a little ways. Um, I, I think at this, point in my, at this point in my career, you you kind of know, you know, some nights you're, you're not going to have it. You know, some nights you're not going to feel good. That's just the way it goes. And I think when you're younger, maybe sometimes you try and do too much. Um, you know, you overextend yourself. You know, you try to make that extra play where – I think as you're in the league a little bit longer, sometimes, you know, you're not going to have it that night and sometimes less is more and you go about your role in a simpler way where you're still effective. And then in that case, you know, sometimes when you do that, things kind of uh, become easier and become almost, you know, things happen for you. Um, and I think that's probably for me, the biggest difference, um, you know, from when I was younger, you know, trying to carve my role out. And then now it's, you know, um, it's almost, you know, to expect and some nights it's just less is more and, uh, you know, things kind of start happening for you easier that way rather than trying to, you know, overextend yourself and maybe uh, grip your stick and work too hard for it. I'm going next to, uh, back to Ken Weeb from Sportsnet. Go ahead, Ken. So when it comes to the power play or penalty kill, Nate, what are the keys or key factors to creating some chemistry uh, and being an effective grouping? Well, I, I think it's just like anything with uh, power play or penalty kill. It's the same thing with penalty kill. Um, it's just, uh, you know, getting to know the guy, uh, knowing his tendencies, um, 
you know, and then just the communication part. I, I think uh, we've had a few good practices, you know, practicing and I've been going with, uh, with Appleton, with apps and uh, just being able to communicate, know, you know, when we're being aggressive when we're not being aggressive. And, you know, I, I think that's how a penalty kill kind of grows. You know, you get, uh, you know, you get some chemistry, you, uh, you can really read off each other. And, uh, you know, we have some guys that, um, you know, I think in, in all the guys that, you know, play that penalty kill role that can, uh, you know, I, I think we can really do a good job. We have guys that can skate, we have guys that could stick some smart hockey players. So, um, you know, I think it's just a matter of time when we get some chemistry and, uh, you know, and get going here that it, it'll be going well. We'll go next to Murat Tesh from the Athletic. Go ahead, Murat. Hey, Nate, thanks for taking the time. Um, just following up on the communication angle, um, as a veteran, I'm sure you don't need too much instruction going around the ice, but who have Winnipeg's best talkers been so far in terms of welcoming you aboard and showing you around on the ice or off the ice? Um, you know, it, it's it's been, I guess, a, a collective group. I mean, um, you know, I got here you know, before Christmas and, um, you know, I've been talking to, you know, Adam Lowry a lot and, you know, and then I, I think just that core leadership group, you know, Wheels and Shife, uh, you know, Shife I've known for a little bit and um, it, it's really been a, you know, all the guys, it's, it's been a very welcoming group. And uh, like I said, it's been super easy to, uh, you know, to transition to this team. And uh, not only that, not only the players, but the coaching staff, everyone has been, um, you know, very welcoming. It's been, uh, it's been a lot of fun for me. And we'll end off with uh, Kelly Moore from CGOB once again. Go ahead, Kelly. Thanks, Gregor. Yeah, just a quick one here, I think, for you, Nate. Uh, I know each night is different. Each game scenario can uh, certainly uh, be unique. But in terms of fourth line duty and what you've learned over your many years uh, in the National Hockey League, is there kind of a sweet spot in terms of minutes a fourth line can play if a team is going to contend, especially in a season like the one that's coming up. I mean, starting next Monday, you're going to play six games in nine nights. Yeah. I mean, I, I think you look at, um, you know, the teams that do go deep in the playoffs, the teams that, you know, especially this season, um, you know, you're, you know, there's, and you know what, and there's going to be nights when the fourth line won't play as many minutes, you know, sometimes they might play under 10 minutes and that's okay. That's, that, that's going to happen. It, it sometimes it's the management of the game. Um, you know, and then there's going to be nights when, you know, the fourth line might play over 12 minutes. And I, I don't know if there's, you know, obviously being a fourth line guy or any guy, it's going to be a bottom six guy is going to want to play over 12 minutes. Um, but, you know, that's necessarily just not the case. I, I think the sweet spot, I think, is a matter of, you know, you get into a game and, and the coach is able to roll four lines and, um, you know, there's not a lot of special teams and, you know, you're in the game early. I, I think as a fourth line guy, that's kind of the sweet spot is when every line's rolling and everyone's, you know, kind of rolling the lines over and you're able to get in the game right away. Um, you know, other than that though, I mean, it's, it's, it's a game of hockey. Things happen. And, um, you know, as a fourth liner, bottom six guy, you have to make sure you're ready. And, uh, when you get out there, you know, you have to make your shifts count.